It's the Magic Gathering Strat Show because I can't find the intro music. Hello, everybody. It's me, Brennan, your lovable host. Along with me, as always, are my two co hosts for the evening Sam, the Vault Boy Hunter. Say hello, Sam. Hello, everybody. And Dan. The fan of history. Valar Morghulis. Valar Morghulis, indeed. No, you uh, have to reply, Valar oh, Morghulis. Valar Morghulis. All, all men must die. Is this... Is this I, I say all men must serve, you say all men... I say all men must die, you say all men must serve. We really screwed this up. Oh, damn. We should have practiced. <laughs> yeah. It was Klingon, right? It's Klingon. No. Oh, no. 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 Anyway, this is episode 66. 65? Oh my god. Okay, reset. We need to just start over. <laughs> okay. No, keep going. Episode yeah, keep 65. Going. Is it rational to be mad at cardboard? Yes. Good. Of course it is. Good, because I am totes mad at cardboard. <laughs> is this the rage cast? It's, it's going to devolve a little bit, I'm afraid. We're talking about Standard Popper, our weeks in review. Um, if we get to it, we can kind of talk about some Popper implications of things. I'm going to talk a little bit about my Popper Cube, because I've done some exciting things with it. Alright, but first of all, we're going to talk about some PDC magic with the Standard Popper. What do we have here? Oh boy. SPDC 3309 this past Sunday. Only eight players. Three round Swiss top four playoff hosted by the lovely and talented and friend of the show, Roberto Remedio. Let's look at top four. Number one is Selesnia Air Support by Amnaramatos. Followed by BG Control by Afro Dwarf. Hmm. A little uncomfortable with that name, but I'll go with it. I mean, he could be a black person who has dwarfism. That's true. So okay. I'm going to go with that. Okay. Number three, or in the top four, two in a row? Worth. Hey, see, I can get behind that name. There's That's no. There's no dirtiness, no swearing. <laughs> Um, R Roberto actually, last week, like 15 minutes after we finished the show, emailed me. He was like, I can have him change the name of the deck before you guys record the show. And I'm like, thanks. Uh... <laughs> it's a little late on that. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's okay. Hey, man, it's not Roberto's fault. No, it isn't. But... No, but, but see, look, he's, he did it. It's all good. Yeah. It's all it's good, fine. bro. Good. All right. So we have the rounding out the top four is black white allies. What do black white allies do? Went two and two. Okay. All right. Let's look at air support. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Never thought I could feel so free. It's got four McKinney aeronaut. Four territorial rock. My goodness. Thraben Inspector, because that's just pure value. Topin Freebade. Blade. Wow, I can't speak this evening. Too much English stout. Saddleback Legac. Servant of the Scale. There's that... What's this one? Yeah? It's the little modular dork. Yeah, it's the modular dude. So you support on him, and then you get a lot of tokens for your flyers. Yeah, you do get a, you do get to put a lot of counters, which is good. Wow, and this looks interesting. Stalwart Aven, yeah, shoulder to shoulder. We talked about last week a little bit. Support two, draw a card. Pacifism, lead by example, which is the green version. Support two, not draw a card, but it's instant and it costs only two mana. Rabid bite, Arr. Follow the hammer in green. True Faith Sensor. 
what does that get plus two plus one on? Let's see. McKinney, that's an ally. Rock. Thraben, it gets it on. Topin, it gets it on. Servant. Mm, servant. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's half. I'm down with that. I mean, and the other, it, like, even if you don't get the plus two, you still get plus one, plus one, and vigilance. Vigilance is pretty strong. Yeah, it isn't horrible. On the free blade, though, it seems silly. Right, but if you had McKinney Aeronaut up yeah. there, a 2 4 Vigilant Flyer. Yeah. That brings yeah. back memories of the uh, Angel. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame it doesn't have lifelink. Well, it's always time. Then you have in the sideboard Aerial Volley to destroy some flying flyers. Netcaster Spider to block some flying flyers. More Rabid Bite, which is always strong. Felidar Cub for some enchant removals. Oh, you know what I found out? Okay. This was on Judge Cast on uh, Magic the Amateuring. They had Judge Fest 2016, where they just asked judges a bunch of questions and people wrote in stuff, and then it was basically like stump the judge at the end where people put up these impossible situations to try and have the judge you know talk about it but this one was okay let's say you had a felidar cub and you put that um you know that red enchantment that if it goes to the graveyard you get an insect like a three four insect or whatever like skin crawling or something like that oh yeah the um the flip card or yeah it's yeah. A, it's an enchant and then when the enchant goes to the graveyard you can bring it back to the battlefield flip and it's the three four creature they said what if i enchanted a felidar cub sacked it targeting that enchantment would i get my three four insect uh, well yes yeah why wouldn't you yeah you would yeah it falls yeah. off first because that's right it falls off before the destroy happens so yes i just thought that was interesting there's enshrouding mist celestial purge angelic purge which is great removal and natural state it's a one mana destroy target artifact or enchantment with man with converted mana cost three or less instant it's pretty good well not bad Pretty good deck. Great. It only I lost think, once. I think it's um, it's a good answer uh, because the format does get bogged down on the ground super quick. I don't know if you guys have been around uh, Shadows Draft very much. No. Uh, nope, not really. Wednesday night we had five rounds. We started at 6.30 and we finished at 12.30 because every round went to turns. Yikes. Whoa. Every round. It's such a slow format, and Standard Popper often follows how limited it is. So. Yeah, the, the current limited is what Standard is. Yeah, so um, it's just the slowest format. I hope Moon speeds it up, but from what they've spoiled, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. I thought they like guarded against that in every draft format now with some evasion or something like that. To get enough evasion to support yeah because it's such a known problem right. you, have, you have to rely on skulk which is pretty bad and yeah. if you want enough flyers you have to go three color a lot of the time and it's not a format that really supports three colors very well okay yeah hmm okay Let's see. Da, 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 the fact da, da, that this da. guy won both the tournaments is pretty impressive. Right. <laughs> it, it's. I mean, it's a good. It's a good deck. All that evasion. Um, then you have BG GB get wrecked. See another good name. Love it. The only one that's different here. I guess we can look at Thunder Rump real quick and see what's going on there. I think it looks really nice. Do you like the Thunder Rumps, dude? Uh -huh. I, I do like some thunder and a rump. All right. Elvish Visionary, Leaf Gilder, some ramp ramp. Kuzlex Channeler, more ramp. Life Spring Druid, more ramp. 
Warden of Geometries is more ramp. What are we ramping to? <laughs> Orin Reef Invoker. Four Rolling Thunders. Yeah. Or you can you can do this. Oh yeah, the uh uh Dan Dan. I'm building a I'm building theater of the mind here. Oh sorry. And then you're just it's more rolling oh, thunders. Shame, shame, shame. But look at the invoker. You can make it a seven seven. And then Valakut Invoker, you can do three damage with all that mana. Although that's gonna take some time. Eldrazi, this sounds like Black Devastate. Green Control would eat this deck alive, and it did. Yeah, look, it lost handily to both Black Green. Yeah, so after Dwarfs, twice. Oh my goodness, that sucks. I hate losing to someone and getting paired up with them again. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, now then you get four Rolling Thunders, the big payoff. But Dan already spoiled it, so, you know, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> and three Pulse of Marasa. Three touch of the void. That looks like it hurts. We need some, some, some camphophonique. Maybe some bactine on that cut. So that's just, that's just nasty. True faith sensor. Some more of that showing up. Sideboard fiery impulse, which is good. Lead by example. More support. Twin bolt, also pretty handy. Stone fury. What's this one? It's three t red red deals damage to target creature equal to number of lands you control. Okay. Netcaster spider, two of those. Scrub has come a long way. Yeah. Snow permanence. Airy bow masters. Been a long time since I've even seen that card. Megamorph. Which is strange. It's a great card. Yeah, three four with reach for four. It's pretty all right. It blocks all those three budded creatures that fly in the other decks, or in the winter deck. Another touch of the void. Eldrazi Devastator. The not so Ulamog's Crusher. Well, that's that. The old standard popper. What do you guys think? I think I have to try the flyer stick. Yeah. You're going to give that a shot? Yeah. Sounds good. I think we um, we need the new set very, very badly at this point. You mean yeah. the format is sold? Yeah. But it and still looks quite diverse. I mean, obviously the Flyers deck rose up to take out the black-green decks. But that doesn't mean it's, you know, that much better. So... Right. <clears throat> oh, people were right. There's a. Uh, I, I just got. I just saw something. There's a whole bunch of transform cards. There's gonna be like something that you know, and then transformed because of Eldraziness. Yeah. Uh, somebody got to spoil a half of it. One of the cards today. Yeah. And it has its a unique Eldrazi symbol in the top uh, left-hand corner instead of it being a, you know, the moon or whatever. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah there's got to be some rules. Anyway, enough about that. I mean, it's pretty interesting. It is, kind of. All right, I mean, what's your week like? It's interesting. Sorry. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it when I get to my turn. Okay. What's up, Sam? What happened this week? Anything interesting? Um... Friday night, I got to draft Eternal Masters. Ooh la la, look how fancy you are. In paper, we had five guys show up, and so I was like, I'm going to draft in the sixth slot, because, you know, magic. Six is <laughs> way, way, way better than five. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, just yes. gave, I just gave the cards to the store, I didn't pay or anything, but... Um, oh, okay. I finished two and one. Not um, bad, not bad. Basically, I lost in the finals to the guy who won... Um, because his deck, he drafted beautiful things. He drafted a Viscera, he drafted a, a Nevernrolls disc, he drafted two Hymn to Tarax. It really took me back to, like, 1999. <laughs> his, his limited deck, he, like, 
uh, if he, if Chainer's Edict was in, it would have been beautiful because he would have probably had like three of those. But I went Jund um, because I first picked a uh, Rancor, I second picked a Bloodbraid Elf, and then I got some like black removal. Um, so it kind of just took me into Jund. And even though the Khan's tap lands aren't super great, they get the job done enough. Plus Pilgrim's Eye. Um, feels silly picking Pilgrim's Eye, but you do. <laughs> but that's probably the last time anybody will get a draft it in this area. Um, most of the other stores did one draft. Right. Um, or uh, one of the stores is doing a sealed. Um, but, I mean, sealed is obviously super expensive. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Because the draft was 40. Um, other than that, uh, I built some decks to play against Dan. Um, Fallout got a new DLC that I'm going to mess around with tonight after Dan's done beating me soundly. Um, <laughs> trying to think. Uh, nothing, nothing really else crazy going on. Um, just kind of a normal week. I worked a whole bunch, so uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, what about me? News. Let's see. Do 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 do. Um, I guess but as far as Popper is concerned, I've been working on. Um, my popper cube blinging it out I got an awesome I don't know if I talked about this already collector's edition orcish aura flame to go in it and that was pretty cool it's one of the things I like about cube it doesn't matter what the card is as long as it's a card you know that yeah. is from magic it's just awesome and I try to get the most off the wall versions I can afford I mean, there's those guys out there that, like, have all proxy cube. Oh, yeah. And it's some of the proxies are so beautiful, it's amazing. Yeah, like the ones where they fix the planeswalker, so the formatting is sideways, but it looks amazing. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Lot, I mean, lots of cool stuff. Um, been buying up all the cheap foils that go in it. Um, the professor did a thing, and when I first bought foils... For the cube, uh, everybody's were bent and it sucked. And so I've had this pile of foils just sitting over here. I've been trying to smash them down and whatnot. It has not been working. And then he talked about um, using TCG Player Direct and how they grade everything at the main site. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna give that a shot. See how that works. I've never had. Well, that sounds like a lot of work. A lot of work. Oh yeah the cube it's um it's constantly curated it occupies my brain it's adam strobieski's cube adam strobieski's yeah Stur whatever i can't pronounce his name right it's um, the stibs gonna, look up the stibs I'm, yeah the i'm gonna build it stybs oh you are yeah hey. I'm gonna, the, now that um chain lightning is dropped in price so i can actually afford it and i might even be able to get a maze of it okay here's the deal with that I have a ton of now non-foil cards. Do you want them? Oh, I would love them. I will mail them to you. <laughs> awesome. Are you going to put any of my altars in? Uh, into the cube? Yes. I don't know, and here's why. They are a lot thicker than the other cards. They are, like, had I continued going, I would have figured out a way to, like, thin the medium out, medium out even more. Yeah. But, like... I just haven't ever done it again. It was my therapy with my horrible previous job to the one that I, you know, <laughs> right. I have a job that I don't need to go home and hit the walls for half an hour and then cry for another 45 minutes and then paint. I understand. So, yeah. But I do have an idea for them and I will premiere that when I'm done on this show. So I do have an idea. It'll be awesome. You should just throw, even though it's a popper cube, you should throw the Mox, um, whatever it is. <laughs> the Chrome Mox? Chrome Mox. Bam. Hey, any deck can use it. Yep. 
that's true. All right, cube. Oh, that's what I was doing. That. Um, what am I waiting on? I am waiting on two Chromox Speak of the Devils. Although I got an awesome gold bordered one from Mr. Sam. Um, very happy to have that. It's going to go into another cube that I have kind of. I'm thinking about that one, but I wanted a gold. I wanted a gold bordered one real bad. So my man Sam got me one. Um, waiting on cards, uh, two Chromox that I had bought on eBay. I'm getting a little worried. It's been over a week. So I'm going to give them till Friday and then we'll see what happens after that. But what pisses me off about that most of all is I got those for really good prices and the prices are creeping up again. So not only would I be out cards, I will then have to purchase cards at a m more inflated rate than I got them for. So that kind of okay. pisses me off. They are up, they're up to 15 now. Yeah, I know. That's like $3 more than Friday. Yep, I got them for 10 and less. Uh, anyway, irritating. But what's more irritating, and here comes the rant, is this new set. Things that make me upset. Number one, I can already see mechanics coming out in this set that will make it unique and make it very interesting. The, but that's number two, and that adds to why I'm more upset. Number one is the big reveal was Emrakul. Whoop de frickin' do. Who didn't see that coming? The only <laughs> thing that would have made that anywhere near interesting is if it wasn't Emrakul. And it is frickin' lazy. This is the most lazy I've ever seen Wizards of the Coast be. I mean, I don't like unsets and things that are cutesy, but I get it. I know people do. I just let that go. That's not me. That's for someone else. That's fine. This but that has been done in fifteen years, right? right. And but and I'm talking about like flavor. Seriously. I'm talking about like silly flavor text and stuff. I think it's okay. stupid, but people like it. Hey, whatever. Well, um, but this right here. If you didn't think Wizards has didn't have like contempt for its longtime players, or and not even contempt, just complete disregard. This is it. If you care about story at all, or you think Wizards cares about story, this should be a giant middle finger to you saying, Haha, we don't care. We sell cardboard crack. Blop, blop, blop. So, they, they could have gone any number of directions, but, in, but instead, they shoehorned an Eldrazi coming into this plane. And I hate it. And because I I am so pissed off about this, and I know it's stupid, like I said earlier, to be mad at cardboard, but it's just the fact that Wizards, you know, I actually enjoy the story, even when the story's kind of weak. I didn't think this, the Theros story was all that strong. I kind of like the fact that, you know, Elspeth um, did something heroic and tragically died in it. I think that was actually a decent story. But this is so super lazy i can't stand it and because of that two things i'm going to do one i'm not buying a single pack i'm not going to the pre-release i haven't missed a pre-release in years i'm not buying anything from this set if i need cards i will buy it from individual sellers i'm giving wizards zero money for this set this has also made it very clear that i will never work for wizards of the coast or be featured as a content creator for anything even if i had that dream because i can't put on a happy face and say oh my god look how amazing this set is it's got emrakul who could have seen that coming everybody everybody saw that coming it wasn't especially a as uh, mark rosewater often says on his podcast that uh, a really big complaint he gets is uh, if they don't complete cycles so if something is missing and there's no explanation People get super upset. So Emrakul was obviously coming. Right. 
but it was so stupid that they didn't include them in the last set. It's because in the middle of that stupid set, which was a horrible set, they they said, "Oh, we're gonna go to two two boxes or you know two sets Set per boxes. series." Yeah. And then what do we do with the last series? I don't know. We'll call it Shadows Over Innistrad, and everybody will buy it because they think Liliana's gonna be in it. Oh, you're a genius. This is, this is the stupidest thing. Again, they could have done anything else and then Emrakul could have been wandering the blind eternities doing something somewhere else and that could be the big bad for yet another set. It could have been the big bad for the fall set, right? Sure, why not? Something. Hopefully there will be no Eldrazi on Kaladesh. Yeah, I'm no, looking forward of course to not. I'm looking forward to Kaladesh. But this set, like, if you two want to do a popper set review of it, that's fine. I'm not going to be a part of it. I don't want to support this set at all. I, 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 I can't stand it. I respect that. Can we give you an opportunity to reevaluate that when it's fully spoiled? If Yeah, sure. If, okay. they, if they somehow amaze me in the next three weeks, we'll see. And I mean, I know that's how what it would take. Yeah, it would. It was going to take something incredible for me okay. to get back on board. So much so, another thing I've done. I'm I'm not on Twitter right now. If any of you tweet at me, I will still get an email and I will respond to you. But I'm not looking at Twitter at all. I can't watch the salivating over this table scraps. I mean, I have to feel. I feel like a, there's a pretty big voice of the community like even cardboard cracks comic that day was about a guy going to a fictionalized version of maro is it emrakul i can't tell you is it emrakul i can't tell you is it emrakul i can't tell you look it's emrakul oh great <laughs> yeah <laughs> the disappointment that was portrayed in that last panel was pretty much how everybody felt at least in my area like, and then the three and a half cards they premiered since, none of that looks particularly strong. So, did you did you see the video I sent you of someone like doing a parody Mark Rosewater reveal video? No, I'll have to find that. I, I saw it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, it's I've never been more disappointed in the company. The problem even, even like, when the cards were terrible, I liked it more than this this build up. Like, why would you waste something as cool as clue tokens and the whole build up of Innistrad for this, as Sam eloquently puts, wet fart noise? And the Emrakul is so much worse than Nulamog. So much worse. So why would you ever run her over Nula Mog? I don't understand. Uh, but apparently she's the Biovox promo. Really? Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of them out there. Was it Emrakul the Biobox promo before? I have, I didn't play during... I think she was the, uh, like the pre-release promo. Wow, okay. Then why the hell is that card 30 bucks? <laughs> Uh, because uh, a lot fewer people were playing Magic back then. Oh, okay. Anytime you see a card and you can't figure out why it is as expensive as it is, the answer is Commander. <laughs> uh, so, Emrakul's illegal in Commander. As a Commander... Can she can be play, in the 99? I think you can. Anything that's banned as a Holy Commander shit. will still be in your deck. They just don't want you casting it over and over and over again, so that's why they don't let you have it as a commander. Uh, well, you take Braids. infinite turns. Yeah, like braids. They don't want people to have a abyss on a stick that they can just continue <laughs> over and over again. That's uh, true. But anytime you see a weird card and you can't figure out why it's $15, <laughs> right. because commander is artificially inflating questionable cards because they're very playable in that one format. And there is a huge demand for those type of cards. It's crazy, crazy. Like seasons past, well, 
always be a card in demand because it does something amazing for a commander deck. So yeah, that's a pretty cool card. Yeah. All right, well that's the end of my rant. We can reevaluate how much I hate it when it's um, in a few weeks. But again, if you send me something on Twitter, I will get a message and I'll respond to you. But um, I'm just turning off Twitter for right now. The 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 people who also hate it would just get me more ramped up to hate it and the people who are loving on it will just make me shake my head so uh -huh. for my own personal well-being i'll be off of it all right dan so uh how was your rum springer <laughs> what <laughs> does dan know what rum springer i is? don't know do you know what rum springer is uh, is it a, an attempt to make a Swedish word? Nope, it's, no. a, it's a real thing, man. Okay, it, it's a very, very close to the word for butt crack in Swedish. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's funny. It's what yeah. Amish people do when they turn 18. 18, yeah, they have like they a full a little year vacation. to decide if they're going to be Amish or not. Okay, and um, why does anybody become Amish after that? Well, they a lot. Most of them do. Almost they get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're already brainwashed. Yeah. yeah, but they just spend that year like having a lot of sex, doing meth, living in poverty, and then yep. they go back. <laughs> and then they go back. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, I, I didn't do that this week. Okay. <laughs> I I kept it at my ordinary meth consumption level. <laughs> Good. That's nice. wise. Yeah, no more than twice. <laughs> then you're an addict. Exactly. So I've done the deck doctor thing for that tortured, uh, salty, salty tortured existence deck. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wrap that up this week. I'm playing uh, Burn in Modern. It's. I am surprised at the power of Burn in Modern. It's like I've been in so many situations with the deck where like, it's a, uh, God, this would never work. And then, oh, God, I can do 13 damage. Yep. And it's then you just it's win. powerful. Yeah, it's super strong. And right now people are cutting at Tarka's commands for some reason. So I haven't done that. So I'm still on the Naya plan. What are they going to? Just Boros? Yeah. Or uh, or keeping, you need the green splash for uh, the sideboard card, uh, Destructive Revelry. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they, yeah. they still keep green, but they go more Boros. Hmm. So even the Boros lists usually splash a bit of green for the sideboard. But uh, the deck is so strong, I'm quite amazed. It's of course very easily hated out, so it can never take over the format. But, uh, wow. Uh, the main reason for uh, keeping white is, of course, Boros Charm, and then, uh, then you want to have core Firewalkers for the mirror. Right. The Lightning Helix is really good, isn't it? Yeah, but not as good as core Firewalker. Yeah. No, I mean, Lightning Helix sees play in the main. Yeah, I, I do keep two in the main. Yeah. And one in the board, I think. It's, it's one, because on our Thursday night tournaments, they're win a box, and yeah. people, people playing um, Naya Burn and Modern have won three boxes. Wow. <laughs> you want to hear the current list? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. So, the problem with the deck, actually, is that there's not enough valid one-drops in Modern. That's strange to fathom, but if... If the deck had Chain Lightning or something like that, it would be over the top. I think it would dominate Modern. But you're often stuck with two mana cards in your hand. So the one mana slot is much more powerful than the two mana slots. And every one mana card is better than the two mana cards for the most part. But uh, so, so the main... The main thing of the deck is four Goblin Guides, four Swift Spears, four Lava Spikes, four Lightning Bolts. Mm -hmm. And the, the other two one drops have like restrictions that makes you don't want to go four with them. That's Grim Lava Mancer, 
feel like you don't want to have three Grim Lava Mancers in play. No. So uh, I run two, and then I run one Shard Volley, and I am really, really considering going up to two Shard Volleys, but having both of them in hand is not a very fun situation, because you are always short on mana. And uh, you need to be, because if you flood, then it's over. So I run 19 lands. They are 12 fetches. I can't afford the Mesas, Arid Mesa. Okay. So I, I run Windswept Heath instead. And that kind of works until you really, really want the mountain. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> Yeah, so you're on the sac three Sacred Foundries and two Stomping Grounds. Right. Uh, and that's like the lands you're going to play with. And then you have two basic mountains. And as in Tron, I feel that two basic mountains is um, like two basic forests in Tron. When you get hit by Path to Exile and stuff, you, re you it feels super bad if you can't get anything. Right. Ghost Quarter, Path to Exile. Yeah, at least you're not just dead to Blood Moon. Um, because a lot of your deck is red, so that's good. Yeah, Blood Moon is... Uh, I've, I've been looking at it so much because I love Blood Moon, but you really can't play Blood Moon because it kills you. But you are not... If the other guy plays Blood Moon, it doesn't matter. But if you did, then... In three mana is so much. So you, you basically... You, have, you could play some sideboard cards at three mana. Like Anger of the Gods and stuff, but I don't. I don't have a three mana card in the deck. So for the two mana slot, then uh, there are four Eidolons of the Great Revel, and that's of course what uh, made Burn so powerful. Right. Uh, three Searing Blazes and the fourth one in the sideboard. Uh, four Rift Bolts. They are like, are they two mana, one mana, or three mana? It's unclear, but they play a bit like a two mana card. Uh, four Atarka's Commands, four Boros Charms, and I just lied because I run only <gasps> one Lightning Helix okay. and one in the side. Um, All right. And then the final card is uh, our two Skullcracks. So six Skullcrack effects in the main deck and none in the sideboard. Yeah, I mean, the thing that you would Skullcrack to stop would be the Malaria combo, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really stop that. No, but Skullcrack stops a lot of th things, actually. It's, uh, it, I'm surprised at how much you stop with Skullcrack. Yeah. And of course it's the big thing against Tron, so I have a totally new, <laughs> a new image of the Tron matchup than I had when I was playing Tron, and then I was like, ah, I'm gonna worm coil them, it's gonna be great, and I kind of did, but... Sitting on the burn side of the matchup, I'm like, oh, this guy can't win. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the matchup is 50-50 when I was playing Tron, and now I'm like, oh, it's 80-20 to burn. Wow. So play both sides of matchups is a good way to learn about matchups. Oh, no kidding. Uh, That's... In the board, then, uh, mm -hmm. four Destructive Revelers and four Core Firewalkers are must-have cards. I still haven't learned how to play Deflecting Palm. Everybody says it's so good, but I keep two copies in, but I often they're often stuck in hand, and they feel really like best-case scenario cards. They're really good against Infect. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah, they are they're... pretty good against Emrakul. <laughs> yeah, they're really good against Emrakul. Um, those are the two times I think you want them, but other than that, like I've seen somebody get totally owned playing against Naya Burn with an Infect deck now, and it was so beautiful, it brought a tear into my eye, so... Yeah, Infect is also a pretty easy matchup for this deck. Uh, two Path to Exile, because you have to kill Core Firewalkers. Right. And I, was the I, was, I, was ask, I was gonna ask what you were killing with them. Um, how you oh, were actually, they, they come in a lot, but uh, you can't afford more than two. And then we had the, we have a Smash to Smithereens, the last Searing Blaze, and the second Lightning Helix, and that's the oh. side. Affinity seems to be a coin toss. So that's the burn deck. Well, that's pretty cool. You have a video of that coming out this week. 
yeah, there will be a video of that every week for the foreseeable <laughs> future. Because I'm really enjoying it. A Tron has made a resurgence. So people uh, tell me to go back to Tron now, but that's not going to happen right now at least. Right. But Tron is doing great. Well, Tron cool. is in sixth place in the metagame. Oh, Actually, wow. uh, above Burn. <laughs> I guess people, people love using their Chronicles lands, I'm telling you. Yeah, but the deck has uh, changed quite a bit. And I don't see these new lists, I don't understand how they survive until Tron, because they just don't care. It's, it's so many bigger effects. Like, what are they? Like, uh, Conduit of Ruin is in the deck. Uh, the, the deck list I'm looking at now that won uh, SG Danbury has okay. both the Ceaseless Hunger and the Infinite Gyre. I'm like, why? Infinite Gyre? Yeah, and uh, no Pyroclasts. So you are just using Coselex Return instead, which makes no sense to me either because you don't want to cast Coselex Return on turn three. You want to play Karn on turn three. Right. So, uh, yeah, they, and it seems like there is no real, uh, people haven't settled on the best deck list. So World Breaker appears in some lists. Other tree mana removal like Fire Spout makes it into the list and I'm, I'm confused. But I will return to Tron one day. I haven't sold anything or something like that, so. I got you. Well, it's okay. What about your Oblivion Too much fun stones? burning people to the face. <laughs> Always burn to the face. Yup. That, that is definitely an oddball build a Tron. And they are all different. That's so strange. Seems that Sanctum of Ugin has made it into a lot of lists as well. I was also wondering about Sanctum of Ugin. What are yeah, your thoughts there. on it? It's, not it's a um, horrible compared to Aya Ugin, but uh, you have to play something. Right. This list isn't running roll breakers either. No, they are like in every other list or so. Yeah, that, I mean that seems super powerful. Yeah, and Ugin is also uh, in some lists and in other lists he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> Looking at the 5 0 list from a league now playing three Ugins. And yeah, I, I just don't. No, at this point. Three seems like an awful lot. Yep. With one spell sky and it, like a severely scaled back creature base. Uh, but I guess most of them have worm coil still. I mean, worm coil is a good, you know, backup plan. Like, and old cards we knew knew wasn't good enough for the deck, like Batterskull, they are sneaking in as well. It's like, free for all, just play whatever you want in Tron decks right now. <laughs> hey, if you're winning, we'll be doing something right. Yeah, I And the reason might be the meta game that it doesn't really matter what you play because Tron is so well positioned in the meta game right now. I mean, I can tell you, like, that, um, the Dredge deck is becoming really popular, and wow. of course, Jeskai Control. Yeah, because a um, prized Amalgam. I mean, the deck has so many interactions with that one card from Shadows. Right. Yeah. It's actually, almost a real deck now. Um, so that's really cool because it's fun to watch. At least I don't know how it is to play or play against, and. Um, Jeskai Control, of course, is like pretty well positioned in the format too. So yeah, I, I think a big reason for Tron's rise is uh, ancestral visions that people want to play the control decks, and uh, uh. that just doesn't work. Also, Jan uh, against Tron. Uh, also, Jan is the number one deck in the format, and that's uh, a meta game where Tron has a very nice time. Well, very cool. 
because if you can play like devastating <laughs> cards from the top of your deck against Jund, then uh, all is good. Like, oh, I have no cards in hand. Yeah. Oh, look, Ulamog. <laughs> there it is. Oh, hope you didn't want those colored permanents. <laughs> <laughs> So Ulamog eats Liliana and Jorgoyf. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, oops, and I still have a Ugin. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. But that does bring us to the end of the show. No, already. Already. See, time flies when you're ranting and raving and talking deck lists. Drinking beer in the I middle of the night. Ah. I can mention that we are going to revamp the Magic Gathering Strat Patreon entirely uh, in uh, July at the latest but we are gonna uh, make some changes sounds good is that your way of telling me that you're letting me go Dan you're going in no. a different direction oh you are safe <laughs> <laughs> as are you Sam <laughs> <laughs> All right. that Baba guy I don't know about him <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, he's save Baba What's that? I said hashtag save Baba. Save Baba, yeah. <laughs> you can't, Dan. What are you doing? He's been with us since the beginning. Yeah, have you watched that crazy mono black thing that he plays on the channel? Oh, yeah, the, the mono black. Um, yep, there's, I believe there's some videos up there. Yes. So, yeah. Anyway, please go to our channel, YouTube slash magic gathering strat if you want to get us on twitter it's at magic gath strat for all the updates for me it's at cerulean says hi i will get a message if you send me something sam is at spo 7677 dan at dan horning please consider supporting us on patreon patreon.com slash magic gathering strat there will be some some new things happening some new rewards some new levels revising yeah it will be more focused on the rewards because I think that's uh, that's a better way of giving people back than uh, the goals. Cause, I think so. Yeah, I think if you see a goal then, and it's big, then you don't feel like contributing $2 makes any difference. Yeah. But the rewards do. And I also like to the current patrons, please give me more deck requests. I'm not getting enough deck requests. I want to play whatever you patrons want to see me playing. Oh, and yes, you can deck request Tron if you like it. <laughs> there you go, folks. Open invitation. All right. Well, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us. My cat's trying to eat the microphone. Ash, <laughs> down. Yes, I just put him down. Silly cat. All right. For this week, I'm Brennan. I'm Sam. And I'm Dan. And this has been the Magic Gathering Strat Show. Magic Gathering Strat!